Good evening, everyone. Welcome this evening to our Christmas Eve service. Glad to have you here with us. And you braved the, the rain, the downpours to be here. And uh, I'm thankful, too, that some people, I didn't think I was uh, telling people not to come with my Facebook post, but I am glad we all can fit in the sanctuary. I, I am glad for that. Uh, but just if you do have uh, kids and your kids get a bit rowdy, uh, we are streaming the service in the fellowship hall. So if you need to take the kids out, you can do that and still be a part of the service by going down to the fellowship hall and just hanging out in there and you can watch the service and there's plenty of room empty. Kids can run around and try not to break anything, but uh, you can, they can be in there. So that is open. Uh, thanks for your patience as we were trying to seat folks and uh, just try and do a good job with that as you arrived. Appreciate that. When we close this evening, uh, we will dismiss from the back of the sanctuary to the front. So if you can just hang out at your seat until you're dismissed at the end of the service, we'd appreciate that as well. So we don't have a cluster back in the lobby, people getting their coats and things like that. If you did uh, get a poinsettia and you're planning on taking that with you, uh, just uh, let the people in the lobby know or Vince or Scott as they dismiss you and uh, they can let us know and we can get that poinsettia to you before you leave. Uh, just need to let us know that. We appreciate it. Uh, our service tonight, of course, is, if you've been here before, is very familiar as we're going to be celebrating and uh, thinking upon what's about to happen tomorrow. And that is Jesus' birth, why it is we celebrate Christmas and uh, our service this evening is trying to help us focus in on why we celebrate Christmas. So you'll hear various scriptures, the songs we'll sing together, uh, the special music that we have, my uh, reflection this evening as well, uh, is all trying to point us to why it is we celebrate and what it means that Jesus has come to this earth. And so we're going to begin this morning, or this morning, I'm usually here doing this this morning, it's it's evening time, it's dark out, so it is evening. Uh, we're going to begin with some scripture, and uh, the scripture that I'm going to read is out of Psalm 96. Uh, tonight, as we sing, as you hear the scriptures, they're all going to be up here on the screen. As you can tell, there is no, there are no hymnals in your pews, uh, so all of the words for the music will be up on the screen. And, of course, um, all of my scripture will be up on the screen as well, so you can follow along with that. And this, this evening, as I uh, read Psalm 96, uh, the purpose of choosing this psalm to uh, begin is to help us uh, think upon what it means that Jesus came. And uh, this psalm, Psalm 96, as I read these words, are true even at Jesus' birth. So everything I say with Psalm 96 uh, is the case for Jesus when he's born, because it all applies uh, to him. So as we begin our uh, worship, let me read these words for you. From Psalm 96, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord. For he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness 
in the peoples in His faithfulness. That is true of Jesus even at His birth. He comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness, and it's right and fitting for all of creation to worship Him. And that's why we've, get, we've gathered here this evening to worship Jesus. We're going to do that this evening together by singing our first hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. If you've been with us this past Advent season, we've been using our Advent wreath to remind us of what it is that Jesus brought to this earth when He came. And so tonight is our last candle. We've lit all four, and tonight we'll, last, we'll light the center candle. And I have a helper to read for me. I don't read well, so she's going to read for me. This is the last time of year we will light the Advent candles. First, we light the candle of hope because Jesus is our hope. Second, we light the candle for peace because Jesus is our hope and peace. Third, we light the candle of joy because Jesus brings us joy. And fourth, we light the candle for love because Jesus is love. Each week another candle glowed and our wreath shone more brightly and each week we were reminded by the burning of these candles about hope, peace, joy, and love. These are the gifts which Jesus brought to us at Christmas time. Finally, we light the center candle. This is the Christ candle. Today we celebrate the gift of incarnation, Emmanuel, God with us. We celebrate the birth of Christ who is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. Christ's light can overcome any darkness, and as members of the body of Christ, we live in the light of Christ. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as, as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the Son of God, chosen to be born of Mary, and became human, one of us. He lived among us, experienced our joys and hopes, our struggles and challenges. He came to bring us out of the darkness to which we had fallen into, God's wonderful, eternal light. Today we celebrate that Jesus is born, Jesus has come, Jesus is our salvation. Let us pray. Great God of love and light, we thank you now for the light of that special star over 2,000 years ago that guided humble shepherds and learned wise men to the and let and learned wise men to the holy babe. Lead us now by the light of your love that we may also follow you t to a new life in Him. In celebration of the birthday of our King and our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, young lady. Excellent job. You have a good teacher. She's been homeschooled this whole time, so it's my wife. I do want to just take an opportunity as we are here gathered together uh, in this service, and uh, we're not doing our normal children's message that I typically would do, so we're not crawling all over each other and gathering right in the, in the center. Uh, if you're a part of Grace Church family, uh, you know that this December has been pretty tough for a number of people, and uh, even uh, Wednesday we got word that Beth Sapay's father passed away uh, unexpectedly. So we've been uh, praying about that, and the guys that meet in my office on a Wednesday uh, got that news right away and, and prayed about that. But uh, we've had a number of those things happen uh, in our Grace Church family. And so as we're here tonight celebrating uh, Jesus' coming, uh, in the midst of this loss, in the midst of difficulty, uh, it's a good opportunity for us to be reminded why we can still celebrate what Jesus has in fact brought to this earth, that Jesus defeated sin and disease and death through His own death and brought life life everlasting to us. It's a promise that Jesus gives us, and that's something to cling to when everything seems to be falling apart, what Jesus offers to us. And so I just want to have a special time of prayer for the people of Grace Church family who have lost loved ones uh, this December.
So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you as your sons and daughters, as your children. Uh, God, we come before you in Jesus' name. God, we're thankful that you care about our lives. You're interested in our lives. You showed us that, Lord, by breaking into this world. God, we're thankful that your, as the psalmist says, ear is attentive to us. God, you hear our prayers, and I am so grateful and thankful for that, Lord, as we together, as a church family, whether gathered in this building or sitting at home, we together just lift up family members, brothers and sisters in Christ who have been struggling this past December because of losing somebody they loved. God, we pray that your comfort would be upon them. We pray that the words that we focused on here at Grace Church, the words of hope and peace, joy and love, might be felt and experienced in these families' lives. I'm thankful, Lord God, that they can be because you have given us your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, even now as we have gathered here this evening, even now as I pray to you, I ask God that you would touch their lives. God, I pray that they might sense and feel your presence upon them. God, I pray that in the difficult days that they've experienced and some difficult days that are ahead of them, Lord, I pray that they might see the light that Jesus brought into this world, that they wouldn't see darkness, but they would see Jesus, who said, I am the light of this world. God, I pray that even tomorrow, as the Christmas celebrations will be different, will feel different, God, I pray that they might still be able to experience the joy, joy that is unaffected by our circumstances, joy that is unaffected by a better tomorrow, joy that is found in knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So God, we together as Grace Church family lift up these, these families before you and ask that you would meet their needs. In Jesus' name, amen. This time I want to invite Judy Devlin to come forward and have Kyle come forward. And Judy is going to sing for us a song that she sings for us every Christmas Eve, a little bit different this year. Kyle's going to be playing the guitar. Uh, but it is a very moving song, as I'm sure uh, many of you uh, enjoy this song. I actually quoted lyrics from this song that I think are my favorite lyrics of uh, all the Christmas carols and hymns that we sing about what it means that Jesus came, that we experience how loved we truly are, that Jesus broke into this world and walked among us, that while this world was in sin and error pining, Jesus appeared and our souls felt their worth. So Judy and Kyle share with us this song, O Holy Night.
Thank you, worship team. Great job, everybody, with our time of worship and song. I appreciate it. And for the messages that are actually being shared with our music, whether you're singing it or whether somebody else is singing it, uh, as I said, the, the point of the service is to point us to uh, what it means that Jesus Christ was born on Christmas. And uh, at this portion of the service, I, I'm going to do my best to point us to that. I'm not going to sound as good as everybody else. I'm not going to sing it for you. Uh, you can be thankful for that. And uh, as I see our time flying by here, I don't want to take too long, which I'm sure many of you are happy about. Uh, but I want to do my part in helping us remember and think through what it means that Jesus has come. I've been trying to do that throughout Advent by focusing on the words that we focus on at Advent. You can see them if you haven't been in our uh, sanctuary. You can see them on these white signs all around me. And each Sunday during Advent, we talked about that word and what that word meant and what it means that Jesus has brought that into our world and that these words are not just Christian lingo that we use at Christmas or throughout the year, but they're theological truths that help us to live our lives in sometimes a very difficult world. And as you heard me say earlier when I shared a word of prayer for many Grace Church family members that have lost someone, I've been uh, a part of that in some way, having to do a few funerals for uh, that and uh, just been thinking about these words and how I can help people find comfort and peace and hope, joy and love in the midst of these trying things uh, that they have in life. And God has done that for us finally, completely in the person of Jesus Christ. And so I want to just read a scripture for you out of Hebrews uh, that is talking about God's final word. This is God's final word. So the question for us that I'm going to ask at the end is, are we listening? Do we hear God speaking to us in the midst of our world and what's going on in our lives? Sometimes it's hard to hear God speaking. Sometimes it's hard to understand it. And as we all wear masks, sometimes it's hard to understand people just face to face because of the masks. You may have had that situation where you're going to check out somewhere and you have no clue what the person is telling you and you're just like shaking your head yes and you don't know what you said yes to but then you just leave and it's sometimes hard to hear. There's a game when I was thinking about this, this difficulty of listening and hearing and making sense of what we're seeing and hearing. Uh, there's a game that my family has played, maybe you've heard of it, I don't know, it's called Mad Gab. Has anybody ever played this game? A few of you have played this game. So we're going to play it right now, okay? So this is the fun part of the, the, the service. We're going to play this game right now. So the point of Mad Gab, if you look at these cards, if your eyes are good enough and you can read those cards, uh, they're words, they're, they're real words, but they don't make sense together. So there's, uh, let's see, four in that one, three in that one, one, two, three, four, five in that one. They're all words that you would know to hear it and make sense in a sentence. But when you jumble them all together, it's pretty hard to understand what you're, you're saying. And so the point of the game is for somebody to say these words and then your team to guess what you're saying. Because what I'm going to say is a real phrase or sentence or it actually means something, even though it doesn't look like it on the card. That's kind of the point of the game. So it's nonsense. It's words that are just jumbled together. I say the words. We're not going to time ourselves. Usually there's a timer. And you have to see if you can understand what I'm saying. Okay? Here we go. We're going to try this. Now, part of the point of the game is nobody studies these words before they say them. So... I'm trying to get these words out, so that's part of trying to figure out what in the world am I saying. So here's the first one. Eighth her mom utter. Eighth her mom utter. Eighth her mom utter. Eighth thermometer. Very good. See the point of the game? You can play this at Christmas if you want to. Here we go. Heine dairy seat. Heine dairy seat. Heine dairy seat. Heine dairy seat. Heine, 
I need a receipt. Thank you. Jess and I are usually on the same team. We've found the more Dutchified you can sound playing the game, actually the better it, it is because my brother-in-law is good at this. Okay, here's the last one. This one's a bit longer. Set bacon hinge ahoy it. Set bacon hinge ahoy it. What did you say? Sit back and enjoy it. Thank you. Yes. Did you get that? Sit back and enjoy it. Set bacon hinge ahoy it. I mean, how did you not hear that when I said it? I mean, come on. So there you have a game that you can play tomorrow or with your maybe New Year's Eve or something. It's called Mad Gab. It's fun. And it's just messed up words put together and you got to just try and sound it out and, and it's a lot of fun. But it's kind of hard to understand it. Now, if you've played with somebody a lot, it's a lot easier to understand it uh, because they know you and they can kind of hear what you're saying and how fast you're talking and that kind of stuff. If you're playing with somebody you don't know, it's a little bit harder. But the point of the game is hearing something real in the midst of something that doesn't make sense. And so that's my reflection for you tonight. Are you hearing what God is saying in a world that doesn't seem to make sense? Because God has spoken, He has finally spoken through His Son, and Christmas morning is when that happens. So let me read for you out of Hebrews. This is Hebrews chapter 1. The author of Hebrews, this letter that he's writing, is to probably Jewish Christians. And throughout the letter, he is comparing and contrasting Jesus to key historical people and key historical moments in Israel's history, and showing them how much greater Jesus is than that key historical figure or person. And he's trying to do that throughout the letter of Hebrews, trying to help Christians understand this. He is showing them this, that Jesus is greater than all these things throughout their history, so that they understand in the midst of difficulty in the midst of persecution, which is probably what they were experiencing, they're encouraged to continue to follow Christ. And in the letter of Hebrews, there's actually a warning to them about following Christ. But he begins that whole conversation in chapter 1 with these words. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. So you've got to put yourself as a first-time hearer of this letter, you as a Jew heard a lot about your past, this wonderful, great, rich history of God working through you and as a people. And it says, the, the author says, in the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. He did this at many times, and He did it in many various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom also He made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory in the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. After He had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty in heaven. So He became as much superior to the angels as, as the name He has inherited is superior to to theirs. So he'll go on, if you read past uh, chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, he'll go on to talk about the angels. And if you remember, the angels are a big part of the Christmas story. The angels were messengers that God used. And God had used these angels as messengers. And it was believed in Jewish tradition that an angel brought the stone tablets to Moses. The law, the thing that they up, upheld as the highest direction and what the, the best thing they could do of following the laws of Moses. And here the author is saying that Jesus, the Son of God, is superior to any angels. His name is greater than all of theirs. And what we see in the Christmas story is all these angels worshiping the one who would come and calling all of creation and everybody they seem to meet to worship the one who's going to come as well. And why does he do that? Why does the author tell us 
that Jesus is greater than all of these angels. Why do the angels call us to worship? Well, the reason they do that is the whole point of Christmas. What is Christmas all about? I hope the answer to that question is not confusing to you. If you're here tonight, you heard what Christmas is all about through your own singing, through the scriptures I read, through the people up here singing to you. We know what Christmas is all about. This is God's final word to all of creation. Jesus is the ultimate revelation of God's love and mercy. Remember, the author of Hebrews began with, God spoke to us through the prophets, through our ancestors, in many ways. But now he is speaking to us in these last days through his Son. It's not about whether this one was better or worse. Was it better for God to speak through the prophets and his, their ancestors, or better for God to speak through Jesus? Was the Old Covenant better than the New Covenant? Was God, did God mess up there and say, well, I've got to scrap that. We'll try this uh, this way this time. That's not what God's revelation is all about. That's not what the author of Hebrews is talking about. The way God's revelation works is from promise to fulfillment. God promised their ancestors that this would happen. God promised many things to the Jews. God promised many things to creation. Go back to Genesis chapter 12 and hear what God said to Abraham and what he planned to do through Abraham in blessing all of creation. God's revelation is about promise and fulfillment. And his ultimate revelation came through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the ultimate revelation of God's love and mercy. And is God's final word to all of creation that he will accomplish that which he promised. This is God's final word because sometimes it's, it's difficult to hear or understand what exactly is going on in life and in this world. And so there's no doubt about what God's final word is. Christmas morning breaks into our lives and says this, He, Jesus, is my final word. Christmas is worthy of our celebration because God, in these last days, has spoken through His Son. I'm just going to list for you very quickly what the author of Hebrews says about Jesus. Why all of the angels, all of creation, all of humanity ought to worship God's Son. He is the heir of all things. He made the universe, space and time, matter. In the beginning was God. That's Genesis 1.1. And John 1.1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He made the universe. He is the heir to all things. All of creation belongs to Him. He is the reflection of God's glory. It's as though God is the sun and Jesus is the rays. And God shines His glory down on us. And we experience that as we experience the warmth of the sun. The sun isn't on top of us. The sun is giving us those rays of warmth and light. Well, that's exactly what God did through Jesus. God is to be glorified, and Jesus are those rays reflecting God's glory to everyone on this earth. Jesus is the very imprint of God. It's like God put his fingerprint on Jesus. And everywhere that Jesus went and everything he touched, he left God prints. Jesus is the very imprint of God. Jesus is God's powerful word. Just as God brought things into existence, Jesus can tell the, the seas to be quiet, the storm to stop. He can tell the blind to see, and they do. The person who couldn't walk their entire life, they get up and start walking, and they do. He can say to that dead friend of his, Lazarus, to get out of that tomb, rise again, and give him life. Jesus is God's powerful word to creation. It's in him that we find life. Jesus made the purification for our sins. As that song said that the worship team sang for us, 
How many kings would leave that throne in glory to take on the pain and suffering to be killed and humiliated and hung on a cross and die for our sins? He who has done nothing ever against God's word, complete obedience, made purification for our sins. He is seated at the right hand of God. That's just a statement, a phrase to tell us that Jesus has all supremacy and is exalted now on high. Christmas morning is God's final word to all of creation. God has spoken once and for all through His Son, Jesus. The question is, are we listening? In the midst of a very trying year, in the midst of all that's going on in your families, all that's going on in this world, we're trying to make sense of, God, what are you trying to say through all of this? I hope you don't miss it. I hope you don't feel as though you are walking around in complete darkness because the light has come. I hope you don't walk around feeling empty and completely broken and thirsty because Jesus says, come to me all who are thirsty and you'll find life. I hope that in the midst of all this, my prayer when all this began back in March was that people would begin to reprioritize what's most important in life. As we began to deal with a virus we'd never heard of, and all of a sudden, all of us became experts on ep epidemiology, and we're reading all this stuff we never would have read if we had to read it in science class, we would have thrown it out and said, I'm not reading that junk, because we were not sure, we were scared, we were afraid. All that has happened in 2020, my prayer was that people would begin to reprioritize, would understand what is important. And so on Christmas morning, I hope you are listening. I hope you're hearing clearly from God. His final word to all of creation has come through His Son, Jesus Christ. And if you're missing that in your life, I encourage you to embrace Him. Embrace this gift that God has given, that you might experience hope and peace and joy and love no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's going on in this world. I hope you're listening to what God has to say because He has spoken in these last days very, very clearly and He has done it through His Son, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful this evening that you have spoken once and for all in all of creation, that the brokenness that we see, we can know, will be restored. The pain and the suffering that we experience, the death that is all around us, we know will one day be eradicated because of what Jesus Christ has done. Jesus came and said, the old order of things has passed away. See, I am making all things new. Lord God, I am so thankful we can experience that now in our lives. We don't have to celebrate Christmas tomorrow sad or broken. Even though maybe we feel that way, we can know that you have offered to us life and life through your Son. Lord, I pray that we do not miss what you are saying to us. I pray that we make sure we have our priorities right in our lives of what's most important. And I pray tomorrow morning when we wake up on Christmas Day, we remember that Jesus is the ultimate revelation of God's, of your love and mercy and that you will fulfill your promises. Jesus will come back again to this world. And in that promise, we can have hope. And so, Lord, I pray that tomorrow we might experience the hope, peace, joy, and love that Jesus offers. I pray it in his name. Amen.